I want to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, it's the Chuck Banks Experience. I think this is episode seven. And today we're going to talk about a variety of things and, uh, and, and we're going to interact together. I'm actually doing something new. I'm actually uh, broadcasting live on TikTok while I record the Chuck Banks Experience. So they get a little bit of, uh, you know, they, they kind of get the back room vibe and things like that. But anyway, uh, today I'm going to talk about a couple of things, uh, a couple of things that are always near and dear to my heart. Number one, ADHD and being able to control that as an adult uh, and also estrangement. Uh, you know, the, this, uh, this sickness that's going on in the, uh, on the planet today about uh, estranging from your adult parents. We're going to talk about those, you know, a few of those uh, uh, aspects and, and, and hopefully we can uh, just kind of drudge forward with that. We're also going to talk about uh, being naughty in the stands. You know, uh, you know, I, I, I look at, uh, you know, whether it's a football game or a basketball game or whatever, and we're, we're seeing a, uh, a kind of a critical situation when we look at, uh, you know, the, the officials and coaches, you know, throughout the United States. And, you know, we're going to talk about naughty fans today. Uh, we're also going to talk about, uh, you know, kind of my first thing here. Um, this past week, uh, I decided to, um, you know, as, as I'm getting healthier here, as, as I'm starting to get, uh, you know, kind of off, uh, off the lamb uh, from heart surgery and this stroke issue that's uh, impacted me since February 5th. Um, I'm finally able to get out a little bit and, and you know, some people are going to think I'm crazy, but um, I actually go in DoorDash, uh, not just for the extra money because, you know, you, you can always use a rainy day fund, but to kind of people watch and to kind of see, you know, what's what's going on in our community and things like that. And, and I'm going to be doing some live video, uh, you know, a little bit later in the year uh, when it comes to that. And you know what? You know, I'm I'm going to share my stories now. I would never, I would never ever, uh, basically throw out, uh, you know, an an issue with, uh, you know, like a tip or something like that. But I will talk about stories. Um, and you know, this this past week uh, was it was I I want to say Wednesday night. Um, I I actually you know I got in the car and right after football practice and I decided you know what I need time to unwind. Because my brain never shuts off. It's a little bit uh, crazy in that regard. And I thought, you know what? I, I used to DoorDash to basically just kind of chill and drive and, you know, and, and I'm able to make a little extra money. And anyway, what I what I did is uh, Wednesday, I, I clicked it because Fort Madison, uh, the area was a little bit busier. And I decided, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to go out and, and see what happens. And you know what? I made 24 bucks in an hour, which is pretty good pay. Um, but you know, again, um, you, you kind of see things from a different perspective because, uh, people often see you and they treat you with a label, if that makes any sense. Like, uh, like that was my third job of the night. Okay. I started out as a, a, a you know, teaching co-teaching. I'll give a shout out to the math department there at Fort Madison high school. They're doing a great job. And they're even doing a better job trying to carry me, uh, you know, working on these parallelograms and things like that. But in, in, in all seriousness, the teacher hat is much different than the coaching hat. And I'll tell you what, when you when you leave the coaching hat and you go into a kind of a service. OK, so uh, and, you know, DoorDash is a service uh, to our community and it. You get treated differently. It's crazy. I, I can remember walking into some of these institutions here in the Fort Madison area. And as long as I'm a paying customer, man, I get treated like really good. And and the DoorDash stuff, we, we kind of get thrown to the to the wayside. And it's it's kind of bothersome. Also, um, I, I can see why a lot of, not a lot of people DoorDash, to be honest with you. Uh, be, because I took, uh, actually I got an order and, and it's really easy on the, on the phone, but I got an order and, uh, the order says, uh, you know, you do not know what the customer ordered and it was from Subway. Okay. I'll throw that out there. I'm going to throw them under the bus here. Uh, Joe say it ain't so I I'm sure he wasn't working anyway, but anyway, it, so I, I, I get this order and it's all packed up nice and neat. Smells good, by the way. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I thought about it. No, not really. But uh, so so I take this out to an, uh, one of the industrial 
um, establishments here in town. I won't say what the name of it is. And um, they got upset because they didn't have his chips in there. Okay, number one, when I got the order, okay, I, I I don't open the package to make sure that your chips are in there, and and it didn't even say anything about chips. So anyway, this uh, this guy said, ah, oh, it's no big deal, you know. I I said, you know, I just got off the ball practice. I can go back and get you your chips, but instead of uh, instead of you know, kind of uh, allowing the middleman, that's the DoorDash dude. Uh, to not take a, a a bad, what do you call it, a bad rating. This guy said that I forgot his chips. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, dude, I did not forget your chips. It did not show up on my phone. And, uh, you know, I ended up getting, you know, he gave me a like a one rating out of four. You know, it's it, it's not that I really give a shit, you know, about ratings, because honestly, do I need to DoorDash? Well, pay off some of these medical bills and stuff, but do I need it? No, um, I, I I do it to serve uh, the the community in in a different mannerism, and I'm able to get rid of my stress. Now, if you're going to DoorDash, don't ding the middle guy unless they eat your fries, and then you can you know then then you can get mad at them or whatever. So this morning I wake up, can't sleep, can't imagine that. And we'll talk about ADHD and sleep here in a little bit. So, so I wake up, um, and you know, I got the beagles out, and you know, I'm playing with the beagles this morning, and they're barking and stuff like that. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go DoorDash for a couple hours. Made 28 bucks in 90 minutes, pretty good pay, pretty good pay for you know, kind of an extra gig. But um, this morning, much different, man. Uh, the the customers were nice. Uh, they tipped well. And it, it was just a nice overall experience. But anyway, treat the middle guys differently, okay? It's, it's, it's crazy to think that, you know, although that I DoorDash, you, you think I own the damn company. And I'm just, <laughs> come on, man. I'm just affiliated with it as an outside contractor. So don't give me a bad, uh, you know, uh, don't give me a bad rating, damn it. All right. So that's, uh, that, that's kind of my first concept for today. Is DoorDash. Also, I, I want to let everybody know that we are firing up Dog Pound Radio again. Be sure to follow Dog Pound, not only Chuck the Chuck Banks experience, but Dog Pound Radio, Death the Show. They, these are all shows that are uh, that are affiliated with the Coaching Culture and Athletics Radio Broadcast Network. And you can follow us on Facebook, uh, Dog Pound Radio, or you can follow me on Facebook, the Chuck Banks experience, and, and I post my links. Whether you like uh, Spotify, Oh man, I got to think of all the 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 different names associated here. Spotify, iHeartRadio, Castbox, uh, Deezer, YouTube, you you name it. Uh, you know our our uh, our podcasts are are on it. Um, Dog Pound Radio getting ready to fire up in the wrestling season. Excited to uh, you know to to maybe possibly get more away uh, women's wrestling. Uh, you know, I, I I really I really enjoy wrestling in general. I'm gonna do some basketball games as well. But I'm gonna give you the listener the opportunity to vote on what is the game of the the week, and and I'll make sure that I associate and go within those parameters uh, to to give you the best uh, content provided. And don't forget, we are sponsored by Stan Schmidt Turn Two Workshop. That's T U R N. Number two workshop. You can follow him on Facebook. And you know, if you got any woodworking uh, ideas, this guy is brilliant. Uh, you know, he he's got a lot of great, uh, great, just great dude all the way around. And he's our only, uh, you know, uh, you know, sponsor at this point. But you know what? I'm I'm committed to uh, pushing Stan Schmidt's Turn Two Workshop uh, into something even bigger. And, you know, be and shop local. Right. And he's a local guy and he's a bloodhound. Uh, so we'll throw that out there. Um, also, don't forget, I do have some copies of the Midwest Paranormal Road Trip Aftershocks. And as we get into uh, as we get into October, um, I, I, I'm going to be diving into the world of the paranormal a little bit. And ghosts and stuff like that. And. You know what? I, I I'll also bring some of my uh, former I I don't know whether you call them famous people, but uh, you know some of my friends in the paranormal uh, community uh, to come in and talk to us. I have copies of Peering into the Void one and two. It's a special edition book. 
about 320 pages. And, and also, I still have copies of The Life of an Overthinker. If you are an overthinker and you are challenged with that, uh, it, uh, it's a great book uh, to basically help you uh, get past and over the hump when we look at this thing called overthinking. And also, Dog Mentality, the story of mediocrity to becoming elite. If you want to get rid of, okay, being mediocre, just good enough, then purchase this book because it is going to give you the tools needed to basically be able to pull yourself over the hump and, and uh, kind of dive into those aspects. Now, I promised that I was going to talk about adult ADHD. Okay, or, you know, uh, e e even uh, we can say young adult ADHD, whatever. I didn't know that I had it. I mean, I, I had inklings, uh, you know, and thoughts about it. But I tell you what, after my stroke, I really noticed um, myself and, and, and I started to dive into the literature a little bit. Uh, when, when you look at ADHD and things like that, um, there's a combination of strategies now uh, that are tailored to individual needs. and you know, I'm, I'm not the guy that's going to promote medication because I think far too often that big pharma tries to get us addicted to those medications. And again, I, I'm not wearing my tinfoil hat today. I'm wearing my Fort Madison hat. So I, I won't dive into that uh, particular realm. But, you know, like stimulants, uh, you know, I, I really noticed that when I could drink coffee at noon and... Uh, it made me tired. Um, the the you know it's it, it it's really strange to look at uh, you know coffee as a stimulant or uh, you know I I remember prior to my stroke I was I was down in some five hour energy because I had no idea what was going on because I didn't have energy I thought it was because I was old you know a lot of people probably laugh in the background and say you are old well I'm fifty two just turned fifty two. Um, and uh, year 52 is going to be uh, a, a great year for me. I, I, I can just feel it. But medication, stimulants, things like that, uh, you know, it, it's going to be effective for some people, but it's not going to be, you know, effective for all of us. Uh, behavioral therapy. Um, I, I, I've often, uh, you know, I've kind of disassociated from, uh, from shrinks or uh, psychologists, uh, you know, psychiatrists, whatever. Um, I don't know why. Um, but I've kind of disassociated with them because of my interaction or uh, situational issue with estrangement that I'll talk about in a little bit. Because, I mean, it's it's good to get advice, but at the end of the day, isn't it our own journeys? Uh, you know, to it, it's it's our own lives to live, and when you give uh, certain amounts of advice to people that are really hurting or uh, or struggling, you know they they might lean uh, to to basically only take that particular advice, and that's a little bit bothersome. But uh, but I but I'm here to tell you that uh, you know there there is a need. Um, we we I don't know how to say this without sounding like an asshole, but we we live in a society. Um, that, you know, we've cut back over and over and over with behavioral therapies and things like that, uh, especially in the state of Iowa, but not, not only the state of Iowa, but, you know, all over. And, and if you look at uh, the amount of mental issues or mental illness issues in, in our society today, it's very high. Now, I don't know whether that's because um, social media and things like that that you can see and you can see the numbers right away, but uh, but I don't remember reading about that stuff uh, back during my book days. All right, organizational tools. Uh, this, this one's pretty good because, um, you know, <sighs> If you ever see my desk or, you know, if you see my area, you know, my podcast area is pretty clean today. But, you know, there's there's a lot of times that, uh, you know, pa their papers are piled up and things are a little bit, uh, you know, in disarray and things like that. And I'm a horrible, I'm horrible at procrastinating. And organizational tools are pretty important. Digital apps. Uh, there, There's one called Hadoist, Trello or Notion. I, I'm not sure what these uh, what these apps are, but <laughs> excuse me, oh, man, didn't mean to blast your eardrums out there. But uh, 
you know, there's there's these uh, digital apps. And how many of you use calendars to help you? I, I, I use them quite frequently. I use alarms on my phones and things like that. But if you're if you're having a little bit of issues with, uh, you know, kind of that uh, that organizational skills and you need those organizational tools, those those are a way you can do that. Uh, create structure is important, routine. I, I have to have a consistent daily schedule in order for me to stay on task. Especially at, uh, at, at, at this point in my life, um, I feel like I have to have everything, every T crossed, every dot, you know, every, every I dotted. And, and I, have a, I have a little book that I write everything down. It's a little bit old school when it comes to that because of these, you know, I didn't know about uh, decluttering and, you know, these social apps, right? Um, but we'll dig into it. Exercise, physical activity can help regulate mood, improve focus, and reduce impulsivity. Yes. Um, I, uh, I, I, I do want to share with everybody because uh, this is huge for me. Um, I'm losing weight. And, uh, you know, I just, just mirror on my phone. You know, it's a lot of steps. I'm not able to lift weights yet. I'm not able to, you know, to overly physically exert, uh, which I'm excited about. I'm excited about getting that sweat back. Uh, sleep and diet. This uh, this might be the most important thing when trying to manage your ADHD is sleep and diet because uh, you know it's. I've noticed uh, since I've gotten off, uh, you know, a lot of the sugar intake, uh, a lot of the uh, nat the bad carbs, and that that particular intake, uh, I, I've noticed that things are a little bit easier when it comes to sleeping, which uh, which I think is important. Uh, you got to prioritize sleep. Uh, maintaining a regular sleep se- schedule can improve concentration and reduce or, or reduce irritability. Now, regular sleep schedule. You know, as a teacher and a coach and somebody that's brain never shuts off, and I don't know what a regular sleep schedule is at this point, but uh, you you have to figure that out. And and again, that's going to kind of be in your own uh, your own way and your own interval. But it can it can reduce irritability. Um, how many of you go to sleep at night and your brain just doesn't shut off? Do you know why? Uh, you know, I I, I read uh, read some peer reviewed articles. I, I love it when I say peer reviewed, uh, be, because it's, you know other people have taken the time to read it and evaluate it, right? But, uh, you know, I, I have read some things that, uh, you know, oftentimes, especially us that our brains don't shut off, especially us that, uh, you know, have a hard time going to sleep, that if you if you get in the habit and routine of opening up your phone immediately when you wake up, and if you're constantly scrolling at night trying to go to sleep, don't expect your brain to uh, shut down and go to sleep. It's uh, it, it it's one of those things where it's kind of like uh, uh, what do you what, what do you say anyway um, like uh, getting rid of that routine and you're waking up during the day and and if your brain is already in over stimulus mode and if you're already looking at a phone that's where that's where you you feel the uh, I call it the AD or the ADHD crash that normally happens about twelve thirty one o'clock in the afternoon. And if you overexert yourself on your phone and all these videos and things like that, your ability to concentrate decreases very, very significantly. So, um, you know, I, I, I know we live in the digital age, but we're going to have to decompress in a different mannerism there. Uh, support groups. Uh, I, I have a lot of friends that have ADHD, so I feel like I have a little bit of support when it comes to that genre. Um, Communicate with loved ones and let them know uh, that that you think that you may or may not uh, struggle from some of these issues. Um, work workplace accommodations. I, I don't know any workplace that's going to accommodate us for adult ADHD. I'm just going to be honest with you. Just going to be honest with you. Okay, they're they're not going to give you uh, flexible work hours unless you work for Apple or or something like that. I I just think that that's come on, man. 
But uh, minimizing distractions while you're at work, uh, number one, uh, you know, the biggest issue uh, that a lot of manufacturers or people in uh, sales and things like that that we see is people constantly on their damn cell phone. And these distractions cause major issue and conflict within an organization. Now, you, you can only imagine the impact that it has, right? It's kind of like this. If, 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 if I wanted to have a, uh, a, a really engaging conversation with someone and they have their cell phone out, uh, I know that I'm not getting 100% uh, engagement within that conversation. So I, so I might uh, simply say, instead of, instead of saying, pay attention, uh, what, you know, that's kind of coach mode, I'm probably going to uh, state, hey, man, I'll, I'll come back later when you're not busy. And, uh, and, Normally that works, or they'll put their cell phone down, whatever. If I ever do that to you, especially you, Sir Isaac Newton, uh, you know, a dog pound radio, Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, if I ever do that to you, say, put down your cell phone, man. I, I got to have a conversation. Uh, it just, it's crazy. Uh, task prioritization is important. Okay. Work with supervisors to prioritize tasks and manage deadlines because, uh, you know, if your brain never shuts off and you suffer from adult ADHD, you're not going to have, uh, you're not going to have that wherewithal to say, Hey man, you know, I'm not going to procrastinate. You're going to procrastinate, but, uh, yeah, you might, you might just need a little bit more prodding. So. Here's a couple of uh, couple of things you know to look at. Um, ADHD in adulthood can present differently than in childhood, and I think that's important to look at. But the core symptoms of in, in atten, inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity remain. So we're, we're you know see how many of these boxes you check off, and and I'll do it with you here. Number one, inattention, difficulty focusing, struggling to concentrate on tasks, conversations, or instructions, especially those that are uninteresting un 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 or repetitive. Oh man, I, I I can I can give you stories for days when it comes to uh, the inattentive uh, personality that that I suffer from, and it's uh, it's no um, you know I if I go into a a PD session. And, and if I don't, if I do not engage, if I do not take notes, um, if I if if I don't give input, I'm done. I I, I totally check out. I I noticed that uh, when I went to college, uh, when I went back to college, uh, you know, after my my uh, my time in business management. After I went back to college, I had to I had to re rewire my brain in order for me to be able to focus. And, and I can remember back then, man, it was three-hour classes, <laughs> three hours. And sometimes in the evenings, you'd have a four-hour class. And, yeah, you would have those uh, certain professors would keep us there for four, four and a half hours. Trying to focus for uh, even an hour and a half on a topic matter that you feel that's like jumping through hoops is very difficult for somebody with, uh, with an uh, adult ADHD. And uh, we we need to understand that. Um, I definitely have difficulty focusing if I'm not interested or if I'm not going to engage. Disorganization, frequently losing things, uh, having difficulty managing time, uh, keeping track of multiple responsibilities, bills, appointments, that sort of stuff. I do lose track of time occasionally, and it drives my wife nuts. Okay. But those moments are awesome. <laughs> it's like, you know, the ADHD brain is, man, when, when you don't have to associate anything with time, like like on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, I, I know that I have certain blocks out for breaking down game film and, and doing certain, uh, you know, routines around the house. But otherwise, when, when I get like three hours to myself, I'm like in bliss, just absolute freaking bliss because uh, I don't have to worry about time. Okay. Uh, frequently losing things. I lose my car keys all the time. Um, you know, there are times that, uh, you know, my wife has to smack me on the back of the head because I've lost my belt or something like that. Uh, difficulty, let's see, keeping track of multiple responsibilities. I think I do a great job with that, especially with things that I'm interested in. Okay. Because of the, I, I, I look at the hyper focus, uh, mentality and aspect of things. And I do a great job with that, in my opinion. Procrastination. Yep. Uh, delaying tasks and struggling to start or finish projects. I've got projects that I need to finish or even around the house um, that I'll start and move on to another project. Uh, <laughs> 
It's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. Hey, hyperactivity. Would you say that I'm a hyper person? I would. Okay. So, uh, you know, I can check, I can check mark one. I can probably check mark two. But in adults, it may be more internal. Restlessness, feeling on edge, having difficulty relaxing or constantly needing to be active or fidgeting, tapping feet, playing with objects, impatience, excessive talking, racing thoughts. I would say that I have all of those things. And here, here's the thing, though. You, you, you can have ADHD and live a great life. I think I've done some amazing things in my life. But there is a constant struggle. For example, um, you have to you have to communicate uh, when when you're being overly stimulated or when when you're having issues, especially with your significant other. Otherwise, they don't know because there are certain things that get stated, uh, and even though it may not seem like a big deal to your significant other, it is to you, and and you internalize those things, and then. That's when, uh, you know, arguments and things like that take place. Three, impulsivity. Impulsive decisions. Making hasty decisions without considering long-term consequences, such as spending money, uh, switching jobs frequently. I don't do that. Uh, you know, I, 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 I've been pretty good in the, in, in the job category, especially the last 25 or 26 or so years. Okay, I have made hasty decisions, uh, you know, at times with money. Um, but uh, that is something, you know, that, that I'm definitely working on. Interrupting others. I do that far too often. And, um, and, and I feel bad about it. It's, it's just something that uh, I, I don't know what it is. Because uh, to be honest with you, I'm the, I'm the uh, most outgoing introvert that you probably ever meet. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense, right, to, to, stay, to say it like that. But, you know, like as far as spending time alone, I could do that all day long, every day. I, I, I don't know what it is. But when I get around people, that's, uh, that's when I start to, you know, my extrovert, extroverted mood uh, comes out. Struggling to wait for, uh, for your turn in conversations, uh, often speaking before thinking, yep, I've said a lot of things in my life and burn a lot of bridges because of that uh, impulsivity. Risk-taking behavior, engaging in risky activities, driving recklessly, doing those sorts of things. When you get mad, right? I, I can remember times when I'd squeal the tires or do something like that, but you have to be very careful with that. Number four, executive dysfunction. I, I want to go over this. Poor time management. I feel like my time management is really good, but it takes a lot of work and self-discipline to get over that hump. Difficulty estimating how long tasks will take. Yep, like uh, like putting together uh, the my dog doors, little doggy doors. I thought, oh, man, this looks like it's going to take thirty minutes, and it took three hours. Yeah, let me let me tell you there. Trouble prioritizing, struggling to determine which tasks or responsibilities are the most important. I feel like I do a pretty good job with that, so I uh, I can't check mark that box. Lack of follow through. I feel like I follow through uh, eventually. Uh, that's the way it is. All right. So relationship challenges. Let's look at this. Conflict in relationships. Difficulty maintaining personal or professional relationships due to impulsive, uh, impulsiveness, forgetfulness, or trouble managing emotions. I apologize to Logan Doty, one of my best friends uh, out there. Uh, you know, sometimes I am. <laughs> I hammer him. He, he hammers back. So. You know, we'll just throw it out there. Listening issues, struggling to listen or pay attention during conversations, leading to misunderstandings or feelings of neglect. Now, when you look at that, um, throughout uh, a lot of my life, I've made a lot of things just about me. Um, you know, if, if ADHD is the culprit, now I know. Now I know how to, how to become a better person when it comes to that. Actually... Actively, engagingly listening, okay? And, and if you look at dog mentality, the story of mediocrity becoming elite, I have created a curriculum to fix that sort of struggle. You know, uh, there, there's just so many, there's so much great literature out there. Listening to understand instead of listening to respond. Now, a lot of us need to have that at our foray, at, at the front of our mind on a daily basis. And that's where that's where I look at you know these cell phones and things like that. We have to we have to throw them away.
Bored of my work? I'm not bored of work, man, because I'm busy, I'm engaged, and, I, and I'm rocking and rolling. And you know what? I don't really work. <laughs> I don't really have a job. I have a passion of educating the next generation of America, the American citizen. And uh, and I and also I get a coach. I get a coach. Two great sports, man. Football and and girls tennis. It's it's not really a job. It's a passion to to share my love for a sport or for education. And and I, I I've heard it from several people throughout my life. You know, find your passion in life, and you'll never work a day in your life. And that's why I podcast and do that sort of stuff too. So I'm not bored at work. Uh, mental health concerns, huge, huge, huge when it comes to uh, ADHD, especially in adults. Anxiety or depression. Many adults with ADHD also experience anxiety, depression, often as a result of unmanaged symptoms because they didn't know. They didn't know that, uh, you know, that certain words uh, are no-nos, right, when it comes to the ADHD brain. They didn't know that you were supposed to communicate with your spouse and say, hey, man, I'm sorry, I'm hyperactive and, and that sort of stuff. They didn't know. And 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 I think that, uh, it, you know, when it's undiagnosed in the adult, it, it, it can trigger a lot of issues in, in your daily life. <laughs> You know, anxiety and depression. Now, it's not hard. It's not easy for me to come out and say, hey, I have anxiety and I suffer from depression. It's not easy for me to make that statement. But as a 52 year old that's trying to help people out there that are similar to me, I'm going to make that statement. It's okay. It's okay. But you have to learn to manage it. Uh, you, you have to learn to overcome those things. And when you do, man, I, I'm here to tell you that there is a peace and serenity out there unlike anything you could ever effing imagine. Low self-esteem, struggling with self-worth, especially if ADHD symptoms have led to repeated failures or feelings of inadequacy. I struggle from low self-worth. Now, my dad would have said, Chuck, quit being a pussy. Okay, He would have said, uh, grow up. Don't worry about what other people think. If I, if I could only shut that portion of my 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 mind down, and even my brothers, man, they 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 give me a hard time about it because you know I I I care what other people think of me, and sometimes I I care way 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 too much, and 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 it affects your self worth. Uh, my my previous boss, you know, he he got underneath my skin so bad it it nearly shut off my body. It, it would nearly uh, shut down my soul every time I had to talk to him. And, uh, and I cared way too much about someone that, uh, that I wouldn't ask for advice from. Okay. Now, let's, uh, if, if you have any of those, uh, you know, shoot, shoot, shoot me a message. Uh, email me, coachingcultureandathletics at gmail.com. That's coachingcultureandathletics at gmail.com. And you know what? We we can put together a plan to try to overcome this issue together. Now, I, I'm, I'm kind of moving over from ADHD and DoorDash to estrangement. Um, this is something that's very, very, very near and dear to my heart because I suffer from it. Uh, estrangement from an adult child can be an incredibly uh, painful and complex experience. It often arises from a buildup of unresolved issues, misunderstandings, or emotional distance. And, you know, here's, here, here's some good advice to, uh, to, to all you parents out there. Do not raise your children the way you were raised um, because they no longer live in the world that you lived in. And I, I made that mistake. I made that mistake, man. Uh, you know, and, and I'm willing to say that. If you hear the dogs upstairs, the old hounds are rolling. Here's some common causes and ways to cope with estrangement. And this is important. All right. Number one, unresolved family conflict. Here's the deal. We only live once. We live for a short time. Why do we have conflict within our family? Why? Um, I don't I, I, I can't answer that question. Longstanding issues from childhood, such as perceived favoritism, uh, unmet expectations, or emotional neglect uh, may resurface in adulthood, okay? Favoritism, um, you know, I, I, I may joke, uh, you know, about my kids, but I love all three of them 
the same. Uh, they're all very near and dear to my heart. They're all different. They're all different people. But man, the, the thing that could have fixed that is if you have perceived favoritism, reach out to your family member and say, hey, man, I see this. Let them change in that mannerism. Communicate it. Uh, because the lack of communication in families today is just freaking, it's, it's insane. Two, differing values or lifestyles. Differences in values, religious beliefs, lifestyle choices, or political views can create tension leading to uh, gradual distancing. Like, for example, uh, you know, uh, my, my son uh, came out as gay a couple years ago, and I still love him. Uh, I still love him, uh, you know, more than anybody can even possibly imagine. And, you know, sometimes maybe another, uh, maybe your child doesn't agree with that, but, you know, they, uh, they, here, here's the real kicker uh, when you look at that particular component of your life. If you haven't experienced it, you don't understand it. And, and again, that's, uh, that's kind of, that's an issue. Boundary issues. This is something that I've probably broken uh, time and time again when it comes to my adult children. Uh, they may feel suffocated by a parent's lack of respect for boundaries, uh, or conversely, they may feel abandoned if the parent uh, has been emotionally distant. Okay? Boundaries. Um, here's the deal. Uh, my, I, I know that my youngest child, Cat, is going to get married someday. Okay? And uh, here's the deal. As, 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 a, as a parent, um, she's going to have her own home. She's going to have her own routine. Uh, even my grandchildren will have their own routine. But the thing is, is that's her family. Now, I'm always going to be a part of the family somehow, right? Hierarchical, whatever, the hierarchy. Anyway, uh, but, but I'm not going to barge into their house without asking. But my door will always be open to them. Just like my door is always open to my oldest child. Hopefully someday uh, she'll, she'll see that and understand it. Toxic relationships or abuse. Uh, some estrangements result from a history of emotional, physical, or verbal abuse leading to a, the adult child to seek distance for their own well-being. If that's the case, then that's the case. Uh, tox toxicity, right? Um, I would say that I'm the furthest person uh, away in the world. Now, this is my opinion, and maybe that's my toxic mentality. I don't know, but I'm not a toxic person. Um, what you see is what you get. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, maybe I'm a little bit too honest, but but I kind of blame my ADHD for some of that stuff, uh, you know, growing up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Influence of a partner or a spouse. Uh, sometimes an adult child's partner may play a role in the estrangement, especially if they believe the parent's relationship with the child is unhealthy or negative. Okay. I mean, is what it is. Uh, you know, my, my wife loved my mom and dad, and my mom and dad loved my wife. Six, mental health or addiction. Now, mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, or addiction can contribute to the estrangement either in the parent or the child. And you know what? Uh, I can see where that, uh, that, that could be a major red flag there. Life transitions, major life transitions such as marriage, uh, coming a parent or, or moving can alter family dynamics and contribute to emotional distance. I'm on low battery mode over there on TikTok, so I'm going to shut you down on TikTok, but I'll be right back here. All right, so I'm I'm going to shut down the old Tiki Taki. Throw that out there. Sorry, I got to got to shut it down there. All right. So so I'll continue here. The, the thing is, is that there are ways to, to cope with estrangement, but we all, all have to understand that uh, not all of us are going to uh, be on through the same, uh, the same changes in scope uh, at the same time. It's not going to even be the same way. Number one, reflect on the relationship. Take time to reflect on your relationship with your adult child. Are there specific events or patterns that you may have contributed to the estrangement? Yeah, I can say that uh, there, there are with me. Um, like, uh, I did not, uh, did not go visit my grandchildren enough. 
And, uh, you know, that's that's one thing to throw out there. Acknowledge any mistakes or areas where you might uh, have an unintentionally caused hurt. Self-reflection can help uh, if you eventually try to reconcile. I hope uh, that I get a chance to reconcile. Um, I've done a lot of bad, you know, uh, I wouldn't say bad things, but uh, a lot of things that I wish I could take back. Give space. This is something that I'm giving. Uh, you know, I, I, I hope that it helps. Sometimes giving your adult child space is essential for healing. Pushing for immediate resolution can deepen the rift. And I did that, man. I've tried to do that over and over and over. Respect those boundaries and demonstrate that you're willing to change the dynamics of the relationship. And that's uh, that's what I'm doing right now. Seek therapy or counseling. I'm not going to. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm in a in a decent uh, decent mentality now. Communicate gently and openly. I'm trying. <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, our communication line is not still open. So I'll throw that out there. All right. So I'm probably not going to have time to discuss, uh, you know, the the toxic behavior in the stands at the football games uh, be, because I I, I want to just uh, just want to touch base here just a little bit and and say what I'm thankful for. Number one, I'm thankful for you for listening and taking the time uh, to be a part of the Chuck Banks experience. Uh, if you have ideas, if you have guests in mind that you would like to see on the Chuck Banks experience, email me coaching culture and athletics at gmail.com. That's coaching culture culture and athletics at gmail.com. Don't forget to go out and check out Turn 2 Workshop, Stan Schmidt on Facebook. Follow it, Turn, and then Number 2, and then Workshop, and, and basically take a look at that. I have books available if you'd like to check that out. Uh, you know, coming up uh, this week, we'll have our second Pick'ems uh, pick uh, with me and Larry the Greek, um, or Jimmy the Greek. I call him Larry. No, that was Uncle Larry. He was on the football field this uh, this past week running some great quarterback scout team. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I am thankful for you. I'm thankful for my family. I am thankful for God, and I am thankful for this country. We're out.